Hey guys, welcome to Flirting with Travel. I'm Lexi, and today we're taking a look at the Level 8 Atlas laptop backpack. Now, if I sound like I'm rushing through this, this is because I'm on my third time of starting this box. So this is a first impression, but it'll be my third first impression, your first first impression, which I think balances out to a second first impression, which is good luck, right? We're doing this again. Okay. Oh my gosh, look at the minimal packaging. I've never seen that before. Okay. I'm gonna get it together. I'm gonna get it together because you deserve a quality first impression. So, this is the Atlas laptop backpack. Now, full disclosure, I didn't order this. This was sent to me. And if I'm being totally honest, just looking at it, it's not really fitting the aesthetic of something that I would normally carry. But what I can say from all of the first impressions that I've gathered today as I keep on opening this box and looking at this backpack, that it is made of quality materials. It feels really nice. So maybe by the end of this review, I will decide that this is the perfect backpack for me. If not, at the very least, we're gonna figure out who this is the perfect backpack for. The first thing I noticed is that this has very minimal branding. It just has like a little eight. Now we just did a first impression of the Level 8 Carry On Pro suitcase, and it does have different branding, which is kind of weird. It feels like they just did a whole like brand refresh in the middle of production. And I'm assuming that this is probably the older version. What's funny about this being 31 liters for a backpack is that their suitcase, the Carry On Pro, is 35 liter capacity. And just for comparison, I also own the Peak Design Travel Backpack, which is a 35 liter. So my initial thought was, ah, oh, this is a little backpack that's meant to go under the seat on the plane in front of you. But based on its dimensions, which are 12.6 inches long, 6.5 inches wide, and 18.6 inches tall, is that it's a little too large to be considered a personal item on a lot of airlines. For many, I think um, 16 inches is about the height of a personal item. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't sneak this on. If you didn't overpack this bag out, you could probably just wear it on your back and someone at Spirits, maybe, well, no, Spirit, they're like hawks. They will catch you. But someone at United isn't going to say, no, slow your roll. That is two inches over. Then looking at it, <laughs> just jumping right in. I see the zipper pulls all seem to be made out of a metal, which is nice. And they have level eight branded on all of the zipper pulls. Let's take a look at the backpack straps. So these are made with padded backpack straps that have like three, I'm sorry, four tufts of padding, which means that they should feel pretty comfortable. And then you can see that there's a little bit of internal um, structure where they're built inward. And what that means is that it kind of, any backpack that fits comfortably on your body should initially move outward so that it curves around your neck, then move inward so that it curves under your armpit before it goes into the body of the backpack, which this one does to a certain extent. You've got a gentle curve of this. If you ever look at a backpack strap and it's just straight up and down, it's probably not going to fit very comfortably. So I am happy to see that. One thing to note is that there's no sternum straps on these, and there's no hip pad. Oh, there is a luggage pass-through. Is that? Huh, I didn't think that there was a luggage pass-through on this. Wait, let's get a ruling. So this is theirs. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that works. Well, then what is this? What's the point of it? Oh, wait. Okay. Not the easiest pass-through in the world, but it is a pass-through. Oh, that's a nice pass-through, too. That's cushioned. 
Okay. I guess the reason why it doesn't have a sternum strap and it doesn't have a hip flap is because it's made to go over your bag. Which is interesting. So this is a luggage pass-through. Now the way this is built, because it's a little bit narrow and it tucks around to the bottom, it's a tiny bit harder to get on your bag, but it does make it very snug once it's on there. The other thing that's kind of cool about this is how cushioned it is. So you get a bit of lumbar support as you're wearing it. I bet you that that sits nicely on your back. It doesn't hit hard because you have some cushioning here. Then, oh, this is interesting. Sometimes I'll look at these and I'll think, oh, that's kind of silly when you have this bit of cushioning on the back. But what it does is that you get oxygen that's coming through so you don't get back sweat as you're wearing this. I bet you this wears really comfortably. Oh, I'm actually kind of excited to carry this backpack. Is this weird? Am I, am I getting delighted about it, even though it's not aesthetically as pleasing as I want it to be? Just because as you wear it, if it's heavy, you're going to get a nice little cross breeze. Hmm. Okay, level eight. I see what you are doing there. So those are the straps. Then we have these two straps at the top of the bag. Now, I'm going to be honest. I like this one, and I don't understand this one. So every backpack is always going to have a strap at the top that you can just lift and go. This one is just a plain material that's sewed, sewn in half. Then on the front of the bag, you've got this kind of techy looking like hard rubber part that's nice to grip and easy to hold. Then you've got that material, just like your plain like backpack strap Jan Sport material. But then you've got this, which looks like a bike, like a bike lock. And I was testing this out on an earlier iteration, and it's not like it comes apart. So it's just to have a cool aesthetic. And as they go, is it my aesthetic? No. Is it cool looking? Yes. But because this is so cool, it's lifted so far from the bag that it's really easy to grab, and it's so comfortable and ergonomic to hold, it makes this look weirder and weirder. Why? <laughs> Maybe as we open the bag, like a reason will become available. But to me, I feel like they could have saved the money on this and just skipped having that extra bit of floppiness. Because one thing I do love about bags is the clean aesthetic. So really enjoy that this is all black with the exception of tiny bits of silver um, metal with that being this. Because the rest of the zipper pulls are all black. So this makes a statement with that bit of silver, and then this silver and rubber makes an interesting statement. But this is weird and dangly in a way that doesn't quite make sense. The other thing I'm gonna be honest about the straps that doesn't make sense are these little bits on the bottom. Is there a place that they're supposed to attach to? No, I don't see one. I don't see where these are supposed to attach, which is odd. Okie doke. So let's take a look at some of the external pockets on the bag. So to start with, we have this very front pocket, which opens up. Okay. You have a little bit of padding on the front of the bag, which is nice. And then inside, you have another. How deep does this go? So I think this is where you could put your wallet. I wonder if there's any RFID blocking in it. I don't see a sign that says it, so probably not. Then inside of it, I feel like this was made for a phone. And again, you have your level eight. Oh, what's cool is that the entire material has the eight, but again, the old branding or the new branding. I wonder which it is. Just different branding than the suitcase is what's interesting. You have a mesh pocket with an elastic top and then two pin holders. Okay, this actually totally works as an everyday carry because to me, if I was packing this, like let's say I decide I remote work a ton when I go and I travel. So I usually bring an extra backpack so I can use it as my laptop, um, my laptop case when I go to cafes. So for me, this pocket would be for my laptop charger and the cord. 
Then in front of it, honestly, my phone goes in my, my pants pocket. So here would be my external battery pack. Then in here, I would put two pens. And as of right now, I don't know what would go in this pocket. Maybe my phone if I didn't want to leave it in my pants pockets. Then up top, you've got a small, oh, it's not that small. Okay, just so you can see how far in my hand goes. I think this is supposed to be for your sunglasses, but you could fit way more than sunglasses. What's interesting is the material that they use for this. Normally when you have those pockets at the top of the bag, they use like a microfiber so that you can put your glasses in without a case. This one is still using um, like that Cordura super like slick nylon fabric. <laughs> Because that opens up all the way. Oh, this is weird. Is this weird? Oh, here we go. Okay, I was like, where do you put the laptop? Oh, that's super cushioned. Oh my goodness, do you see this? Nothing is breaking your laptop in this. You could drop kick it. Holy heck. So it's not just that it's a cushioning. It then has like these little divots of what feels like foam inside so that it's like it's practically like corrugated foam inside of here and it goes all the way down to the bottom and then even the bottom has a bit of foam on it okay and that is deep so this is meant to hold i think they say a 13 inch to a 16 inch laptop that is impressive and then on the top you've got a a thick strap, and it says it's airport checkpoint friendly, which if I'm being honest, I've never believed that. I know that they make these backpacks with the intention that you're supposed to be able to unzip it, leave your laptop in, and just send it through security, but literally every TSA agent who tells you to take your bag out, your laptop out of your bag, then looks at you and like, take your laptop out of your bag, and you're like, but they said it's checkpoint friendly. They don't believe that. They don't care. They do not care. Just take your laptop out. Oh, but I do like that it has stitching so you can flap it down to get your laptop in and out. That is cool. Okay. You know what? It's talking mad stuff at the beginning, but level eight actually has some really nice features to their bag. And then you have another pocket, which I would assume this is either, this to me would be where you'd put like your, your tablet. So if you have an iPad and you're traveling with both of those, like for me, I always travel with both my work laptop and then I travel with my personal laptop. So I would put one laptop in here and then my personal laptop would usually fit in this pocket just because my personal laptop is a MacBook, which is much thinner, whereas my work laptop is Dell and it needs more space. But I do like how this opens up. And that the point is because it's supposed to be TSA checkpoint friendly. Though, I would love a final ruling from the TSA about whether they accept just flopping this open as an acceptable uh, option. <laughs> then, <clears throat> we've got two pockets on the side. Oh, these are your water bottle pockets. Okay. Grabbed a water bottle because I want to see how it looks with it in there. Oh! Okay, that came out better than I thought. Wow, that's going to be like the title of this video. That came out better than I thought it would. <laughs> Literally every time I try something with this bag, I'm like, huh, I like it more than I imagined. Okay, and just for reference, so this is a, I'm assuming like 16 liter bottle, but looking at that, you still have plenty of room. So you could fit a bigger bottle in here. And I like that it kind of zips up because let's say you just wanted to put in an umbrella and then zip it part of the way so it doesn't slip out. I usually travel with a water bottle on one side and an umbrella and tripod on the other side. And I think that this could fit both. I like that. Okay, just, just so we can see that. Initially it was fine, but you need to actually push this back in and zip it, which is not the worst thing in the world, is what it is. Okay, now let's get into the main cavity of the bag. I should mention, 
they have this on either side. So I could still travel like that. I could have my water bottle on this side and then stick an umbrella. Do you think you could stick a whole tripod in this? No, it's too small for a whole tripod. Okay, if you tried to put a whole tripod in, you might be able to make it work, but it's gonna eat into your bag space. Because one thing that's interesting is that this kind of pops out a little bit, but this pocket is flat, which means that you're going to be pushing inward to here. So if you try and put anything too large, like one, you're not going to fit a hydro flask in this. But if you did put a hydro flask, if you could fit a small hydro flask, it's going to eat into your bag space. Because I just want to take a look at that so you can see as I push it in, it pushes out a little bit but I think it's pushing in way more on the inside of the bag. Huh, okay, and then pop that back in. The mesh pocket, is that, it's a little bit of elastic. And I'm wondering what happens if the elastic stretches out, but I don't think it actually matters because a lot of it's housed inside of here. And maybe that's the one good part about it eating up your internal bag space is that because it's pushing into the bag, it's not like every time you lean over, your water bottle is going to flop out, but I'll do a test of that. Okay, so next we get to go into our main bag space. So in here we have more pockets. So you've got a mesh flat pocket that goes all the way down to the bottom of the bag. And sometimes, I don't know, like what are you supposed to put in all these like flat pockets? Especially when they're super deep because then it's just floating around. Maybe a notebook. And then you've got another pocket back here that has a strap that goes over it that's just like halfway. But one thing that's important to note is that this only zips halfway down and is blocked by your pocket. So it's not like a, a clamshell opening. It's a top loader. Okay. I feel like we got to try putting some stuff in it just because I want to get an idea on how much 31 liters carries in this. So for that, I haven't brought out a ton of stuff. We're just going to put in my laptop, which is a 13-inch MacBook Pro, then my Peak Design tech pouch, and my gravel toiletry bag. And neither of these are packed out to the brim because I am currently traveling and I'm using the stuff that's in them, but I wanted to take a look. So first thing first, our toiletry bag. If you hadn't noticed something, I really do like all my travel stuff in all black. Then I'm going to put my tech pouch on top of it. And so that is, you still have a ton of space up here. I think I could actually get in a small Peak Design packing cube, the toiletry bag, and the tech bag all in this. Like this might actually be a good weekend bag if you just were taking a little trip. And then I've got my laptop. Pop that in. Oh, shucks. Look at how deep that goes. Like the laptop fully disappeared in there. Let's just do that one more time in the slow mo. Yeah, fully disappeared. And then you pop it up, secure it closed, and then put in our water bottle. And this gives you an idea of what it looks like when it's packed a little bit out. So there's closer to the 6.5 inches. Now we got to try her on. Okay, to do that, I'm gonna put up our hair. I had a hair tie. Do your hair ties run away from you? Because mine run far and fast. Did we do another good bun? Oh my God, guys, we're having a good bun day. We are gonna mark this on a calendar as the greatest hair day ever. And then put our microphone in the middle of us so we can try this backpack. Now I haven't adjusted the straps at all. Okay, so this is what it looks like on. It fits pretty comfortably. Now granted, you, you, like, you saw what I packed in here. It's not super heavy right now. So it feels good and it does curve in pretty nicely. I don't like the dangly bits. I don't, 
What are these? What are the dangly bits? Actually, if you're just holding it like this, like do 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 do. I guess no one's taking my bag. You know why? Thumb power. But so this is the backpack. And it does feel really nice on. So kind of what I was talking about where you have like a gap between your back and the backpack because you've got your two little cushion parts that are kind of hitting right under, not your shoulder blades, but like you're hitting on your traps. And then you've got kind of your lumbar support. So you can see that there's a little bit of airflow. So as you're walking, this wouldn't get overly warm. Let's do a quick little. Oh, and it stays on your body. Now, how often am I doing this? I don't know, but, oh, and then I just wanted to do a quick, like, is the water bottle falling out? No, it's pretty good. That seems stable. Okay, I know this is, looks weird, but we're simulating what you do in an airport, okay? And then can you get to your water bottle one-handed? Yes. Can you put it away one-handed? Oh, kind of yes. That's not bad. Okay, so I'm 5'2", and this bag is hitting above my butt and, like, pretty much right at the bottom of my waist. So if you're super tall... This might look like a midget backpack, but if you are vertically challenged, this is a nice backpack because normally they don't make them for us. They make backpacks for people with long torsos, and this is actually pretty comfortable. It doesn't feel like if I lean my head back, because that happens on my peak design. It is so tall that if I lean my head back, I can practically like rest on the backpack. Whereas this, it like really fits my body well. This is a first impression, but I will be traveling with this. I am taking a three-week trip through Mexico and Brazil um, starting next month, so I'm actually going to try carrying this bag. But here's my thing. Does this look like it fits under the seat? Because if it's too big to fit under the seat, what they're going to do is call this your carry-on and then force me to check the carry-on, like my actual carry-on. So what are your thoughts? Let me know. Does this look like it fits underneath the seat? Final first impression. I like this bag way more than I thought I would when I took it out of the packaging. The materials feel really nice. I like the metal pulls. This is growing on me. Like the aesthetic of this is more rugged than anything that I would normally carry, but it's so kind of funky that it's, it's starting, I'm starting to vibe with it. The zippers, are they waterproof? I'm gonna have to go to their website and check, but as I'm touching it, I can see that this is, that's not waterproof, that's just like a plain nylon zipper. So if it rains, your main cavity is not in good shape. What about the laptop compartment? Kind of the same idea, however, in the laptop compartment, it does have like this little lip of this nylon kind of ripstop like material that probably is water safe. Oh, and you know what's cool? Here's a lip that is water safe as well. Maybe the laptop compartment is. Yeah, because inside it's fully lined with this nylon. So it's not like, oh, if it penetrates this, it's going to get in immediately. I wouldn't say that this is waterproof, but I would say it's water resistant. So, like, if there's a torrential downpour, don't just stand out in the rain, twirling around like you're in The Sound of Musical, go inside. But if it's drizzling, you're okay to like walk from the cafe to your hotel. The padding on the back is fantastic. The luggage passed through, one, super happy that it had it. That surprised me because I thought it didn't. It's a little hard to get it over the bag. This is really good because I have experienced the back sweat of carrying a backpack when you're just so tired. After all is said and done, still don't understand this. And am I gonna cut it off? No, because I don't know if I could cut it tight enough that you wouldn't see a little bit of it showing, but literally like 
take this off of your packaging. You don't need it. Maybe it's supposed to be like when you have this so that you have a handle to bring it up. I mean, oh yeah, you don't need that. Look at that. Found a way around it. Uh, yeah, I, my note to level eight is you guys did fabulous on the design of the bag. I think so much of it is well thought out. Don't love this. I genuinely prefer the bag without it and you save yourself on some material. Um, these little dangly bits, I do wish that there was some sort of catch or like a loop around here that you could tie it into so it's not just hanging. So for me, level eight, I'm not giving you ways to save money. Literally take this off and use the fabric savings to put a small little elastic band around here so that you can just slip this through and then it's smooth. That's, that is my note. And then the elastic band doesn't need to be fixed. It literally just needs to be a plain band so that if I'm loosening this, then the band will just tighten so that it sits at the bottom. That would be my note. Otherwise, I'm actually excited to carry this bag. And honestly, that is not how I thought I was going into this conversation. So I will check back with you with a full review after I've traveled. In the meantime, ciao. That's all for this week. Link up with us on Instagram at Flirting With Travel or check out flirtingwithtravel.com for itineraries and more travel hacks. Taking off. Love you.